Did you just get admitted into nursing school and you are overwhelmed by the sheer amount of requirements that they're asking of you? It's completely normal. My name is Bridget, I'm a nurse practitioner. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to get all of your requirements completed in a timely manner. So I'm already a nurse practitioner, but I'm going back to school for a post-masters to become a psychiatric nurse practitioner. And that requires getting the whole process started again. Now I've been around the block with this. Went to school first for nurse educator, then I went back to school for family nurse practitioner. Now I'm going back to school for psychiatric nurse practitioner. I don't know about your school, your university, but my program starts in August and they only just let me know that I was accepted July 11th. Ideally, in order for you to get the ball rolling with this, you would make an appointment with your primary so that they can order titers or give you your nece necessary vaccinations but my primary was booked. My program starts August 26th. My primary was booked until August 24th. My primary does not have an appointment against August 24th. I can't wait that long. So I urge you that do not leave this until the last minute. And getting these requirements done is non-negotiable. Like, yes, it's not fair that they give you such a short amount of time, but you have to do it. Not having your vaccinations could result in you not being allowed to start the program. So let's talk about what they might require of you. They're going to require a background check. So make sure you get that process started as soon as possible because background checks take time to complete. Now with the background checks, follow the instructions on their site, enter in their access code. And in most times they're electronic. You can go to a UPS, a local UPS in your area, make an appointment first, go to a local UPS in your area, get your fingerprints done. They send it automatically to the school. You're gonna wanna get your vaccination card. This is very, very old. Um, this is my record of immunizations from when I was a child. <laughs> what vaccines do you need to figure out if you've had or not? You need to have make sure you have your doses of MMR, the diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis. So with MMR, you must provide documentation of two of those vaccines or titer results. Also, diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, three vaccinations, and you have to have a Tdap booster within the last 10 years. Uh, they also are going to require hepatitis B vaccines. You must provide proof of three shots or tighter results. And also varicella. I'm older than maybe most of you watching this, so I actually got chicken pox. So you must, comp you must provide back proof of vaccination that you either had two vaccines of varicella or a positive titer. So this is why you wanna get you wanna get started as soon as possible. Do not procrastinate because you have to find documentation that you've had this done. And if you can't find documentation that you had it done, it's okay, don't freak out. You can at least get titers. But before, they're also going to require a physical exam. Before you can get that physical exam signed off, the physical exam will often say, this person is free of communicable diseases, right? So I used to have patients come to my clinic and they would want me to sign off on this physical, but I would have to say, I'm sorry, I can't sign this physical yet because you have not had your TB test and we don't have proof of like your vaccinations. So the other thing that uh, you need to have done for school is a two-step PPD. Depending on your school, you wanna check your requirements, right? Some will only accept a two-step PPD or some will accept a two-step or a, a negative quantiferin. Now, if you can get the quantiferin done, it's going to, going to be more expensive, but if for whatever reason your PPD comes back positive, you would have to have a chest x-ray done. I didn't want to, I'm busy working full-time right now. I didn't want to have to go back to the clinic and do that two-step thing. I just don't have the time right now. And I have to go get a urine drug screen test also for school. So I said, you know what? I'm already going to go to Quest. I might as well just get the Quantiferin. The Quantiferin is drawn through your blood. So just gonna do that. Now I'm frugal with my money. I think this comes from being raised by immigrant parents that grew up poor in Colombia. So I don't wanna be spending an arm and a leg. How do I get this done? Paying as the least amount of money as possible. And if you're watching this and you're a nursing student or you're just going to start nursing school, you're probably broke, right? Just realistically speaking. I called my, ideally again, you go through your primary. I guess in hindsight, if I had a recommendation for you is if you know you're applying to school and the program starts again in August, make an appointment ahead of time for July, like mid-July, 
for titers or uh, vaccine appointment and then also make an appointment like two weeks later for your physical right i should have done that because i didn't do that now i'm saying how can i get this done in the paying the least amount of money as possible if you i didn't call center care but i did call um care spot doesn't accept insurance for this kind of stuff they wanted to charge me for the tdap they wanted to charge me for titers like it was going to be way too much money Fortunately, I thought I needed a TDAP, but fortunately I called my primary cares to make an appointment for that physical. And I said, I said, first I need a, an appointment for a TDAP. And they checked the records and they said, you actually don't need a TDAP until next year. So I was like, perfect. So can I get a record of my immunizations that shows I don't need TDAP until next year? and can can i go pick it up this friday because i don't need to see a provider for that so they were nice enough to print it out for me and i just went and picked it up last friday and this is a sidebar right because i because i'm a nurse practitioner you would not imagine the amount of vitriol that i get about nurse practitioners and and i will say the majority of healthcare professionals the majority of physicians are very nice and very kind but there's a few that like hate nurse practitioners they hate us this is a perfect example of why we need nurse practitioners because my primary can't see me for a full month they don't have an NP at their clinic. They're completely booked, right? So what did I go do? I made an appointment at CVS Minute Clinic. Now, CVS does not accept health insurance for physicals. You would have to pay out of pocket for that. However, for like titers or wellness exams, usually they will run that by insurance and insurance will pay. I will keep you posted on if I get a bill. Out of pocket, it'll be around like $59, $69. Make sure that you check your price list before you go to a CVS and you let them know ahead of time, do not charge me for a physical. This is for titers, right? Again, out of pocket, $59.69. I haven't received a bill for my insurance, but I went to CVS and they can technically draw titers there, but I didn't want to do it there. Let me cover this up for privacy. So I just got the order. They gave me the order and they ordered the Quantiferin, and then they also ordered the Varicella. Because the last time that I had titers done for Varicella um, has been maybe like more than four years, so I wanted to get titers done again. I recommend you keep a, you keep your records of previous. I have, this is the old physician, he moved away. This is from 2014. When I go see the physician, I'm, I'm literally gonna show this document and say, look, this physician has signed off on this already. I basically transcribed everything for them, so all they have to do is sign. I wrote down all my MMR dates, all my hepatitis B dates, this other physician signed off. I'll show it to that physician, she can sign off. If she really wants to double check his work and check my immunization card, she's more than welcome to. So today I'm going to Quest and I'm having my Quantiferin as well as my Varicella completed and my urine drug screen. Also, they usually, well, not all schools, but if they require a urine drug screen, you might as well get do those both at the same time. You have to get all this done before you go see your healthcare provider for a physical because they cannot sign off that you have a negative TB if you haven't had it done. I scheduled an exam for like one to two weeks from now. I can't remember exactly. I believe it's like two weeks now. So I had called, Walgreens has like this thing called Village Medical and they're different than CVS Minute Clinic because they operate more as a primary care clinic whereas CVS Minute Clinic is a retail clinic not as acute as uh, Centra Care which is also like acute care. The difference is that with urgent cares they don't always they charge more and they don't always go through your insurance right now for acute visits uh, CVS will go through your insurance, but not for physicals, like I said before, and I don't want to pay CVS money when I don't need to. So I had called Walgreens v Village Medical Center and I have a PPO plan. Now, this is where it gets a little bit complicated. If you have an HMO, your primary is your primary and you can't go to other doctors unless i'll try to make this as simple as possible if you're if you have an hmo plan then unfortunately you have to go to your primary unless let's say your hmo card says your primary care physician is suzy q and at village medical center there the primary there that's going to see you is john doe you would have to call your insurance company and say, I wanna change my primary to John Doe, then make an appointment with John Doe, and then he can see you as your primary at the Village Medical Center and you don't have to pay out of pocket. 
because I have a PPO plan, I do not have to do that. When I called uh, Walgreens Village Medical Center and asked if they would go through my insurance, they told me that I would have to change my primary to blah, blah, blah. But then I was like, that doesn't sound right, right? So I called because I have a PPO plan. If, it, if I had an HMO, that would have been correct. So then I called my insurance company and they told me that correct i can just go to village medical center that provider there is in network i gave them the name of the provider that i made the appointment with it's in network so i will be going there in about one to two weeks with all my paperwork already organized all my uh, vaccine records titers available she'll do a physical she'll sign off on the physical and then i'll upload it every school will have a different um others will have their own built-in site to the system i'm going to upload everything there and i will have everything ready to go before the start of the semester that is one way to navigate it just because again my primary is booked until uh, my primary is booked a month out just for normal physical so um that's kind of a way around the system. So I hope that was helpful. I don't know, I'm recording another video about going back to school and why I'm going back to school if I'm an FMP and blah, blah, blah. So if you wanna see that video, uh, make sure that you check out the channel. Maybe it could be posted before this video or maybe it's posted after. I'm not sure in which order I'm going to post them, but either way, go back and watch it or tune in next week to watch it. <laughs> make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. It helps me out tremendously.